Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and today I want to give my thoughts on the Halo Infinite Flight 2 tech test. So let's waste no time and get straight into this. First, let's talk about the bots. So far, are definitely an improvement from the first flight, but they still get stuck in certain places on maps. From what I've seen, on live fire, they get stuck around the power-up spawn, the plasma grenade spawn, and the bottom mid near the doorway close to the open field where power-up spawn. The UI overhaul performed much better compared to the first flight, and the settings were actually working on my end at least. I really only noticed a small visual bug when going into the armor hall menu, and I'm not sure if 343 did this on purpose, but the colors for the AI are extremely different. I don't like the color change because I had my AI red, but it's orange now. So I'd like the colors to be reverted back to the way they were in Flight 1. A brief bug I came across uh, is in the battle pass, is that while I did reach tier 30, I wasn't able to equip certain armor pieces on my Spartan, even though in the battle pass it says I had them unlocked. As far as maps goes, I ha I'm a bit mixed still, and I think Bazaar was probably the weakest arena map. A few suggestions that I can give is, is that maybe swap the rocket and camel spawn on Bazaar, that way the rockets will be in a much more riskier position and might encourage players to come out more. Live fire is probably the most balanced so far in my opinion, so I don't really have much to say on that map. Recharge, I feel, needs to be reevaluated because I feel especially in strongholds, the gravity hammer side of the map is too strong. One suggestion I could give is maybe move the rifle spawn at the gravity hammer side down one floor so that way it's at a less advantageous position. Behemoth. Now I'm probably gonna be in the minority here, but I didn't really enjoy my time on that map. There are way too many power weapons on the map, and a warthog doesn't work in a 4v4 setting. I think the sniper slash skewers should spawn at the bases because once one team has control over a sniper, I feel it's hard for the other team to get to the other sniper. This map really shows off how butt fucking useless you are when you don't have a rifle in your hands. The sidekick really needs a buff. I'll go over weapons and equipment in a different video, but I felt I couldn't do anything once one team has control of a sniper and shock rifle. I could, I would replace the hog on the map with maybe another ghost. Or instead of having two snipers uh, like at the bases like I suggested, you can have maybe one sniper or skewer at the bottom mid of the map that replaces the power up spawn. And that's really all I have to say on Behemoth. Next let's talk about Capture the Flag. Overall, I think it, played, uh, it played pretty well on both Bizarre and Behemoth, despite some of the issues I gave on Behemoth and the one suggestion I gave on Bizarre. I have to say 343 did a good job at letting you sprint with the flag while still keeping flag juggling intact, so I tip my imaginary hat off to you 343. Good job. Now one thing I did notice is that you are able to grapple the flag with the grapple shot when it's not in, in its, uh, its pedestal. While this is no doubt really cool, I don't think this should be allowed as well. That's pretty broken to say the least. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about the training mode. Overall, the mode worked as intended and I really had no issues with it. Now that's pretty much going to do it for this video. 343, I hope you were able to understand the jargon that came out of my stupid mouth and I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share this video with anybody who's hyped for Halo Infinite. And until next time, peace. Another one on me. Skewer has a skewer on commandos uh, corner. There's one shot, one shot in there. Oh, he pulled on me.